Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our briefing to discuss the outbound Howard flyby burn that occurred 7.44 a.m. Eastern Time this morning, and shortly thereafter, our closest approach to the moon at just 81 statute miles above the lunar surface. Joining me today, I have Mike Serafin, the Artemis One Mission Manager, Judd Freeling, a Flight Director, and Howard Hugh, Orion Program Manager. We're going to start off with some opening remarks from our guests before we move into the Q&A portion. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike. All right. Thank you, Leah. And uh, good afternoon. Thank you for continuing to follow the Artemis program and the Artemis One mission. Right now, we um, are setting up to orbit the moon. We had the uh, big burn called the outbound-powered flyby occur earlier today, and that was, uh, to date, the largest uh, propulsive event as Artemis is hunting the moon to uh, to uh, accomplish the distant retrograde orbit in our in our um, stress test of the Orion spacecraft. As we enter the middle leg of this mission, uh, we've largely com completed the outbound leg uh, towards the moon. We're going to have a, a period of time circling about the moon in the distant retrograde orbit, and then we're going to have the return leg. And if we could bring up the uh, Artemis One mission map, uh, I'll walk you through a couple of key decisions here. Uh, if you look at that green line, as we've headed uh, from the surface of the Earth uh, on the, the middle of last week uh, through the point of translunar injection, and we completed the disposal of the uh, Aram Kraut propulsion stage, and our rocket did its job, and Orion has uh, initiated the start of that outbound powered flyby. Uh, earlier today, we uh, performed what is bullet number nine on the uh, on that uh, graphic, and we're setting up for the distant retrograde insertion, which is that gray racetrack about the moon. So that first leg, uh, the green leg, is largely complete, and we will um, officially enter that uh, distant retrograde orbit when we complete the distant retrograde insertion here um, uh, in, later this week. The middle leg will be uh, half a lap in that distant retrograde orbit, and uh, we will be coming up um, in, the, in a little over a week on the uh, farthest point from Earth at bullet number 11 before we initiate the return leg, that blue leg, where we depart the distant retrograde orbit, and then um, at bullet 13 essentially perform our deorbit maneuver from uh, over a quarter million miles away at the return powered flyby. So in terms of uh, decision gates, you know, we had a number of pre-planned decision gates. The mission management team is gonna meet uh, on the following dates to set up for uh, the, the key decision gates. We could adjust these if we need to, but uh, on November 30th, we will meet to uh, discuss departing the distant retrograde orbit, which is essentially reversing that two maneuver sequence uh, through bullets 12 and 13 on that, uh, on that mission map. And that sets up the distant retrograde departure on December the 1st, followed by the return powered flyby on December the 5th. Uh, a, a subsequent area following decision gate will occur on December the 5th. Uh, now that we're setting up the, uh, the return leg home, uh, we will be meeting to decide um, to uh, deploy the recovery forces. A joint U.S. Navy and NASA team uh, will depart on a recovery ship from Naval Base San Diego, and that will set up for the ship's departure on, on or about December the 6th uh, for the recovery zone in the uh, Pacific Ocean. And then on December the 8th, uh, Judd will bring in a recommendation as our entry flight director, along with Melissa Jones, our recovery director, uh, uh, in combination with the U.S. Navy, uh, and we'll pick a landing site out in the Pacific, and it'll, it'll be based on a whole host of factors, but um, also weather. Uh, we've got to uh, decide where our weather, uh, best weather is, and we could sail up to 1,200 nautical miles from our uh, nominal landing site uprange and still meet our entry conditions. So uh, those are the three big decision gates, November 30th, December 5th, and December 8th. In the meantime, the mission continues to proceed uh, as we had planned, and the, the, um, the, the uh, ground systems, our operations teams, and the Orion spacecraft continue to exceed expectations, and we continue to learn along the way uh, about this uh, new deep spacecraft.